It's one or the other. You actually look at the science or you don't. When it comes to mushrooms, have you ever heard sayings like this? There's bold mushroom hunters and there's old mushroom hunters, but there's no old bold mushroom hunters. Or sayings like this. You can eat any mushroom once. If you're into nature, people have probably sent you things like that, and in some ways it's kind of funny. But the problem is, a lot of those stem from a basic misunderstanding of mushrooms, something that a lot of us share. There's a lot of myths, which we're going to break today, that have permeated our culture and our TV shows. In fact, here is a clip from one of my favorite shows, Norseman. And this guy, which one did he eat? First, he ate one of these, and then he took a big bite out of one of these. Okay. So that one is deadly then? Yeah, uh, it, it's hard to tell. It could just as well have been the first one. Can't you just eat that one, Kirk? And we'll see. What I love in particular about that clip is that it gives this illusion that at some point in history we knew nothing about the edibility of mushrooms, and then some brave souls decided they were going to systematically classify them, sacrifice a few people, write down which ones you could eat and which ones you couldn't. My feel is that today, many of us who come from Western European descent have less knowledge of mushrooms than most of our ancestors did going back into history. And I say Western European because there's a little bit of mycophobia that is associated with ancestors of, say, England and some of the people in the western part of Europe. It's not so in the east or in other parts of the world. And that's probably the reason that when I grew up, almost nobody had this feeling that you could go out and eat mushrooms in the wild. In fact, you were taught the opposite. You were taught don't at all touch mushrooms in the wild, let alone try to pick them and maybe eat them. That just wasn't a thing. We're learning now, we are in the mushroom revolution, which is such a fun time to be in. And we are going to break and debunk some of the myths that a lot of you probably have. And by the way, to help me with this, I have a few people who are experts in the field. Robert Rogers, who I'm very lucky to get to spend time with, who's arguably the leading expert in the science behind medicinal mushrooms. And then other mycology friends who you've seen in the past, including Trad and Irene, Tony, Amanita Dreamer, just a lot of people who are very knowledgeable to help us get this information right. Let's get started. Myth number one, there's no real science behind the health benefits of mushrooms. That is not true. I hear it all the time though. Uh, both of these two books walk through the current science as we know it for medicinal and just general mushrooms. This one has over 220 species. This is the human clinical trials. Robert Rogers wrote both of these books, who I'm out here with today, so that he can help me understand the specifics because I have lots of questions. I wanted him to give me his best example. Uh, the study that I often cite that I think is useful is they took several hundred patients who had colorectal cancer. They did surgery, they cut out the cancerous part, resected up the intestine, and then sent them home. And uh, half the group, they gave uh, turkey tail extract, very small, one gram twice a day. The other group, they gave a placebo. And then they followed them for the rest of their lives. And the group that received the uh, control placebo lived an average of 4.6 years after the surgery, which is right under that five-year survival rate that is always bragged about by cancer centers. The other group who actually received the turkey tail lived an average of 10.6 years, fully six years more. We should know that. I think people who are undergoing cancer therapy should know that kind of information. Oncology centers should know it. Oncologists should know it because they will often say, don't take any supplement while you're taking a chemotherapy or a radiation session. And that is absolutely unscientifically true. You can't say that you're practicing evidence-based medicine and then ignore it, right? It's one or the other. You actually w look at the science or you don't. Why aren't oncologists telling people to take mushrooms? Like, what's the problem? The point is they're not trained to look at integrative therapies. And uh, part of the reason I wrote the book was specifically, I've given a whole swack of those books away to oncology centers hoping people will read them. Myth two, the famous Amanita muscaria, the flyagric, is deadly poisonous. 
We've probably all heard that it has the potential to be deadly poisonous, and many of us have probably repeated that information to others. We definitely have ourselves. Although you cannot pick it and you should never eat it. However, I recently did a deep dive into the science and practical use of it from people who use it every single day. I think it's the limitless drug. And if you take it in the right doses, you will see for yourself that it is. I've been on it, I know what it does. It's helped me find a way to navigate the world through my neurodiversity, still be me, but not with the anxiety anymore. And this is part one of a two-part series on Amanita muscaria that if you want to check out, I think it's one of the more fun videos we've made. Myth three, magic mushrooms will melt your brain. It's definitely not going to melt your brain cells. Absolutely not. And there is a proof for that. We have. You know, so many years experience in the clinical research and we know how it works. We know for sure, we're not guessing. If you're like me and you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you might have thought that. The problem is, it's not at all true. This spring, we actually went to Jamaica. We went to a psilocybin retreat, so we got to explore psilocybin mushrooms and their use in therapy and mental health. Fascinating. That myth is definitely broken, it's not true. Well, you can watch that longer video, which I would highly recommend you do if you're at all interested, uh, right here. And I, I would go to that link afterwards because you're not gonna get it into your feed. Unfortunately, YouTube is, has shadow banned that content for me. Myth four, cooking mushrooms is totally optional. I'm not sure why people think that you can just go out into the forest, pick a mushroom, and then have a gourmet meal. It's not really how it works. Never eat raw mushrooms because they're not good for you. Um, the mushrooms are composed of chitin, so it's like it's like you're eating the, a, a chemically component identical to what's in a crab shell. If you eat a raw mushroom, it's passing through you. If you cook a mushroom, um, you're actually getting access. Your body can access the protein that I just talked about, the medicinal properties I'm going to talk about. I would just maybe not eat raw mushrooms. There's not that many you can eat raw. I think the reason for that misunderstanding is that you often see those common button mushrooms in the store, and that's one of the few exceptions where you just chop it up and you put it on your salad. Myth five, touching deadly mushrooms is extremely dangerous and you should never do it. Now the reason I say it like that is that I recently went on a walk in Sweden with Jonas, who is a biologist, of course. Uh, he, he had his young son with him, and he had this understanding that I think a lot of people share that not only should he not touch any of the mushrooms, especially the ones that he saw that were deadly, but he shouldn't let his son touch them or anyone else and that you should wash your hands right away when you get back, which probably for hygiene is good, but I think it was just this idea that even just a little bit of it on your hands, like maybe poison ivy or something does, could spread the toxin into your body. I mean, I can understand the parental caution, but I didn't know how to address that. That's why I asked Robert Rogers. So do you encourage people to touch and feel and pick and like smell and lick? Yeah, I think you can do any of those. I mean, uh, people go, some of the Amanita are quite deadly poison, uh, but you can handle them and, and you can taste them. Uh, don't ingest them. But uh, I think the sensory part, particularly many mushrooms have a particular smell. If you don't do the smell test, I think you're missing a lot of how you learn about mushrooms, yeah. And are mushrooms safe to taste with the tip of your tongue? Yeah, like a, like a lot of the rushulas, a lot of these, you know, gilled, waxy kind of, but red capped, there's hundreds of them. If you taste it a little bit and it starts to get quite hot fairly quickly, you probably know that you're dealing with something that is not edible. This one's gonna get huge. This is awesome. Look at that. Big. That's a big one. Yeah, you're sweaty. At six, poisonous mushrooms can be identified by their bright, showy color, just like you would frogs or insects. There's almost nothing true about this, although you can bring that information with you to other things like insects and reptiles and amphibians. Uh, that bright showiness says, hey, don't eat me, I will mess you up. In the mushroom world, that myth may be exacerbated by the fact that the most famous one, the red and white Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric, the Mario Brothers mushroom there, that one, while it's not deadly poisonous, which we talked about in myth two, it can cause you to get sick, but some of the deadliest ones have no color at all, like this pure white destroying angel. This thing will kill you if you eat it. And others, like the deadly gallerinas, well, they're just little brown mushrooms. Nothing showy about them at all. So there's, there's really no rule of thumb when it comes to the color and the deadliness of mushrooms. Myth seven, 
functional and medicinal mushrooms are adaptogens. Adaptogen, it's such a fun word to say, but the problem is there's a little more nuance to it, so I had my friend Tony from Fresh Cap explain what it really means to be an adaptogen. Hey Rob, so adaptogens. We hear this term tossed around a lot. Believe it or not, adaptogen is a very specific scientific term. A natural substance considered to help the body adapt to stress and to exert a normalizing effect upon bodily processes. The only mushroom that is known to be a proven adaptogen is actually cordyceps. This is cordyceps militaris and it's typically used for energy and endurance, but it is a powerful adaptogen. There is another mushroom that is considered to be a probable adaptogen and that is reishi. A lot of people do use reishi for stress already and maybe one day it will be considered a proven adaptogen. All the other functional mushrooms might be adaptogens, but the truth is we really don't know yet. Myth eight, you can eat all medicinal mushrooms. You'd think you could, right? It is, it's actually not true. I found that out just a second ago from Robert Rogers. All medicinal mushrooms are edible. We know that's not true if you've ever chewed on a turkey tail. The other is that all mus medicinal mushrooms can be taken safely with pharmaceuticals. I mean, even reishi tend to have some blood thinning properties and shouldn't be taken with, you know, Coumadin or Warfarin. They should not be taken at the same time due to danger of bleeding out. How do you know which ones you should take and which ones you shouldn't? Well, you could read my book. <laughs> read your book, okay. But, so you have uh, a list in your book or something? Yeah, and, and you should look it up because uh, there are a lot of great medicinal mushrooms and they do have little contraindications. For example, uh, one of my favorites is turkey tail. Uh, and taken over a period of time, uh, the melanin uh, pigmentation will increase and, and turn your fingernails a dark brown, which is not really harmful and goes away once you stop taking them, but for people who don't know, that's a big issue. Myth nine is that if we find out mushrooms are good for us, we'll start using them. One of the key questions I wanted to ask Robert Rogers about was even though the science is there, we know from the studies that these mushrooms are beneficial, why aren't people using them? Why aren't clinicians recommending them to people? Education the way they're educated in medical school. I feel like we're at the time where it's changing. It is changing, absolutely. And I think some of the uh, younger physicians that I talk to and do courses for and with, they're way more open and they're understanding a lot that there is a place for very strong pharmaceuticals, but there's also a place for helping people learn how to take care and educate so that they, they eat better and they they look at what they surround their lifestyle with so that they actually don't have to rely on end-of-life kind of medications. They can actually promote their own well-being through the use of good foods, adding mushrooms into your diet. I'm going to just stop right here and say, if you are interested in the longer interview, everything that I asked Robert Rogers about medicinal mushrooms and generally how mushrooms relate to modern medicine and natural medicines, then I would encourage you to go over to the Patreon page where I have links to all of that down below. I also have a link to some of the extra work that Irene and Trad are doing in psychedelic psychotherapy. It's super interesting stuff. They're using mushrooms. And then also what Tony is doing with functional mushrooms. I'm going to leave links to all of that there. Also, I'm gonna take just a second to say all of you out there should take advantage of mushrooms in your diet. Add them to your diet. No matter if you're young or if you're old, you can get some benefits. You can start with oyster mushrooms like Robert Rogers suggests. Two meals of oyster mushrooms a week is as good as any of the statin drugs for keeping cholesterol levels low. And they're delicious, right? So why not? Or you can get the benefits from various powders like this. I feel incredibly lucky to have Mud Water is one of our sponsors today. This is really the perfect sponsor to have for this video. They have a whole bunch of drink blends, like th this is their morning drink blend, which is a little bit of a coffee substitute. So instead of drinking coffee in the morning, you can drink this and you have a bunch of different mushrooms mixed in. Uh, their night blend has similar things. All of the mushrooms and herbs that are in this help chill you down for the night. 
And they also now have this, which is their mushroom boost. You can add that to a drink of your choice or to your morning coffee or smoothie or even to any either of these blends. And they have eight different medicinal mushrooms in there. A couple of my favorites are cordyceps for endurance and stamina, lion's mane for boosting your mental uh, power, cognition, reishi for stress, turkey tail for immunity. Love all of these. So if you wanna start adding mushrooms into your diet the easy way, I would suggest uh, with this mushroom boost or any of their morning drinks or afternoon drinks, go down to the link in the description below to get started. No matter how you do it, I think it's really important to start getting mushrooms in your diet. And by the way, if you're actually curious what the medicinal benefits are of these individual mushrooms, I made a video on the top six medicinal mushrooms, which you can click on right here. Highly encourage that. That's a fun video. I'm making videos on all of them in the future. So click that little bell button, subscribe, and that way you won't miss out on any of the future Stone Age Man videos where we're just exploring all the benefits of nature, understanding it better, and trying to um, live healthier and happier. That's the goal anyway. All right, we'll see you in the next video.